Good evening to everyone. Hello to Ryan. Hello to Elemental. I'm happy to say hello to myself. Hello to Lisa. <laughs> um, and so uh, tonight we're going to uh, talk about the topic of telepathy, remote viewing, and mediumship. I also want to say hello to everyone who's out there on the web listening. We can't see them here in the room. Uh, however, people can connect through their computer and listen in. So thanks to everyone who's doing that as well. Uh, this show is recorded. So if you do any sharing or discussion that you're not so comfortable with it being in the public domain, just know that it is recorded. Uh, so the definition of remote viewing uh, is the practice of seeking impressions about a distant or unseen subject, purportedly sensing with the mind. Uh, typically, a remote viewer is expected to give information about an object, event, person, or location that is hidden from physical view and separated at some distance. So you might be familiar with Ingo Swan. Uh, Ingo was acclaimed psychic. He was an artist. He was an author uh, known for like co-creating remote viewing. And uh, specifically, he was in the Stargate project, which uh, was an alleged secret uh, U.S. Army unit established in 1978 at Fort Meade, Maryland, uh, by the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency. And the purpose of it was to investigate uh, potential for psychic phenomenon in military and domestic intelligence applications. Um, so I looked at this earlier today, Lisa and I were talking a little bit about this on a very small level in our everyday life, like how does this possibly manifest for us, yeah? Um, how many times have we like received a call from someone? We'd just been thinking about them or we're discussing them and they call. And I remember this old wives tale kind of saying, um, my, my mother used to say that you don't say people's names, right? That you don't want to like, don't say their name because you're going to call them up. Uh, so that's an interesting aspect of the phenomenon that seems to exist um, in our everyday life. Another example is when we have strong senses to stay away from a certain area or not attend an event. We don't know why we decide to listen to ourselves and later we find out, you know, that a tragedy happened. Uh, you know, Lisa mentioned the Twin Towers. On that day, many people decided not to go to work or they left for work late. They stopped by a coffee shop. They did something that was not out, you know, it was out of their norm that they usually did on a day-to-day -day basis and it resulted in the preservation of their life. So in these instances, the question is, you know, are we tuning in to our own radio wave and listening to these predictive signals? Another person, I'm glad Ryan's here because he actually um, was the first person that, you know, turned me on to this great show. And then Lisa watched it. Um, with Tyler Henry, who is the Hollywood medium. And I found a really great clip with him uh, where he is uh, doing a reading for Matt Lauer. And I wanted to uh, play it. And I find him very interesting because he actually does call what he does remote viewing. Uh, more, I, I didn't hear him much say like so much medium. So I found that interesting. So you guys just uh, raise your hand, Lisa, if it doesn't come through clear, but I'm going to go ahead and play this and then we can unmute and talk about it. You never know where you're going to go. He wows people with his psychic abilities. He also has a new book coming out in November called Between Two Worlds about his life as a medium. We've had Tyler on the show before to do some readings, and he always insists on not knowing who his subject will be. So while I didn't know what to expect from our conversation, neither did he. Hello. Hello, Tyler. How are you? Wow. How are you, man? I'm great. Gosh, it's great to see what you. What a pleasure to see you again. Wow. Have you been? I've been amazing. How have you been? I've been nervous. I don't understand the process, to be perfectly honest That's with okay. you. I'll explain it. The way that this works is that you'll watch me scribble, and I just do this. And this is kind of my way of forgetting my surroundings and kind of distracting myself and focusing on a central point so that I can kind of pick up on subtle impressions that come through. I found in this practice that sometimes holding onto an object will actually make a stronger connection 
with a particular person. Ultimately, anybody can come through. It could be someone connected to the object. I might bring through people that aren't connected to the object. Tyler started by asking for a pocket knife I'd brought. He didn't know it once belonged to my maternal grandfather. But as he had just explained, sometimes other people insist on making their presence known. Wow. Okay. So I have a few people coming through, but I first want to start with this man who is insisting to connect. This doesn't come through as like a grandfather, but this is coming through in a fatherly kind of an essence. Okay. This man is immediately going to have me talk about the passing. Let's see what this says. I'm definitely getting more so a reference to a progressive decline in health. And he showed me the symbol of a phone being held to one's ear when they're in an unconscious state and being told, like, it's okay to be able to pass. When they show that symbol, that to me always acknowledges, you know, that they were ultimately told by family, it's okay, like, you don't have to hold on. And there's a feeling of appreciation with where he was when he actually died. There's a feeling of appreciation that's like, I, I refuse to die surrounded by doctors dying in a hospital, withering away. Whether he knew it or not, Tyler was talking about my father, who passed away in 1997. At his request, he spent the last few weeks of his life at home, under hospice care. He is thankful for the steps that were taken for him to not pass away in a traditional kind of facility. Um, that's really important for him in the way that it comes across. So, I know it's a lot to take in. I haven't asked what makes sense and what doesn't thus far, but... <laughs> a lot of it makes sense. Good. Good, good. A lot of it. Good. So strange. He's showing me a reference to like a coin, and I don't know why this is coming through in the way that it is right now, but he's referencing these coins, and it's a coin collection. It's like a very random, specific, old, archaic thing. I have a couple of silver dollars from him, but not a, a lot. Okay. Just a couple. It's actually a reference to having three, and then I feel like I have to acknowledge either missing one or misplacing one. I'm going to talk about two. Uh, how many do you have knowing that? I think I have two. <laughs> okay, well, there's a third. I think I have two. <laughs> yes. He's just showing me a vision of a bird flying into a house and having to get this bird and, like, trap this bird. It is the funniest thing. I don't know if you have to, like, run up and, like, grab a box and, like, capture it and throw it out. But there's a funny instance about this, and it is specific, so I have to verbalize it. Uh, it's random details like that that can sometimes validate that someone is coming through, that they're around us. So, We've had that happen. That's happened. <laughs> Tyler says his abilities also include a sensitivity to people's medical conditions, and he picked something up from me. Do you mind if we talk about health? It's nothing serious. No, not at all. <laughs> so you have a susceptibility to something called sleep apnea. That's good to keep in mind. Uh, you're... <laughs> you're done. Well, your entire dad's side of family is coming through and having me joke about this. It has been brought to my attention that I might snore just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep issues aside, Tyler said my dad did have another message. There's a reference to fishing, but he's talking about being spoken out loud, too. I know what this is, actually. I don't know if you're aware of this, but he's acknowledging that an individual will be out on a boat, and I feel like I'm sitting alone, and I'm fishing, and I'm thinking dad. And he's having me acknowledge this feeling of, like, I'm there with you, I'm there with you. Um, you know, my dad shared two passions with me. He shared golf and fishing. Nice. And um, I do go out and fish a lot alone on a boat. Yeah. And this idea that, that that might be a time to communicate with him or that he's attempting to communicate yeah. is um, it's phenomenal to me because yeah. I spent a lot of time doing that. Your father is so immensely proud of you. You didn't have to get where you are today for him to be proud of you. And you didn't have to get where you are today to be successful in his eyes because he views you as successful regardless. I hope that that gives some insight. It's, it's, you know, this is nothing you could, a son or a daughter could want to hear more about their parent. Is it possible to ask and see if, if he has any things he wants to know from me? Sure, sure, sure. I just want to make sure you're happy. Beyond everything else, beyond everything that you have, just that you're happy. This is number one priority. Tell him I'm happy. Okay. Because of him. Absolutely. And you know what he knows. I have to say, it was just a fraction of our conversation. The conversation I had with Tyler it lasted for more than an hour. And there were times, guys, where my hands were shaking and I was felt like I was perspiring because... The things he was saying were so spot on. 
So what I wanted to discuss, and if you guys want the microphone, uh, just click request. I'll give you the microphone and then we mute and raise our hands and take turns talking. Is one, is this a special ability that, that people have? Or is it ability we all have and some are just either raised to be tapped into it or are more tapped into it? Can we raise our, our own consciousness to have these abilities? And uh, and just looking at that from, from that level, um, I know, Lisa, that you said that you had some notes and some things that you wanted to share yourself. I don't know if you want to go ahead and share some of those. I certainly would love to hear what your your thoughts are on if we have this ability, how can we refine it and how can we use it like for the greater good, even for our own selves, right? Um, one thing I really love about him and, and something that Ryan and I were talking about was, you know, he's got such a positive and loving spirit. And is that part of him being able to grow that ability? Go ahead, Lisa. Um, I just want to say hello to everybody. Um, Ryan and um, Elemental, I don't know you, but I'm glad you're here and uh, welcome. Um, this is a fun topic to me. Um, it's something that I think it's a... It's a, it, that we all are able to access the frequencies or the vibration energies in the world. Um, some of us have um, healed and reached an awareness or a consciousness level more than other, others. Um, and um, some of us, you know, still have healing to do, but we still have that basic sense where the hairs on the back of our necks rise up if, if something's amiss around us or we sense something about somebody and it just feels off kilter. So we decide, hmm, we're just going to leave them alone and walk the other way. Um, so, you know, I, I hope I kind of hit on maybe something that, that uh, speaks to um, everybody here, but um, yeah, that, that's about it. Thank you, Benny. So if I'm hearing you, Lisa, that there's possibly like these tiers of getting to this level of resonation, right? Uh, which would kind of goes back to that seventh veil thing, right? Breaking through the seventh veil means you're, you're busting through trauma, you're busting through barriers, you're busting through uh, preconceived notions, all these things to kind of get your mind into the scientific place. I, I really adore scientists because they're so open to all these possibilities and I enjoy that mindset. Um, so when I look at that and think about like consciousness where we may have to get to, I'm kind of really, honestly, I don't know about you guys, but I'm so sick of that word. I don't know why I've been hearing it since 2012, <laughs> but it's like, I want to find another w word for it. Um, I think it stems from the subconscious conscious kind of thing, but it's almost like a genetic thing. Like we need to really dig in and, and decode our own selves. And what will we find? Um, I had a conversation with Dr. Bick today because I wanted him to explain a little bit. He, if, for those that don't know, he's, he's the chief medical officer at Hudson Alpha uh, Biotechnology in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. But this article had come out that the human genome that they'd finished um, you know, completely tracking the human genome. So I said, so Dr. Beck explained this to me. Um, and so basically it, they just came full circle in that everything they need to identify you as a humanoid versus say a feline is now complete. But what is still left in our bodies was what once was called junk science. They don't call it that anymore. It's more like a, a dark matter space. Um, 
a good analogy would be that you had a certain type of corn, but the only way this corn would grow is if you planted a weed with it and you don't know what that weed is. You don't know how to identify it, but you only know that that weed has to be growing in order for this corn to grow and thrive. So that's what we're looking at. And I am just dead curious about that subconscious space. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, yeah, that's, you know, I'm not inferring that, um, that uh, you, ha you have to be 100% healed because there's people out there that, you know, are, have, like, look at Ty uh, Tyler Henry. He had this ability since he was, um, I think he said 10 years old, when he really started tapping into um, these intuitions and senses. Um, so I agree with you. I think we need to dig in within ourselves. But I think my feeling is that all of us have the potential to... Um, to feel these um, different vibrations um, or frequencies in the universe that affect us as humans um, where we can uh, remote view and um, know things and see things, have premonitions, um, and even see into ourselves better, like you were saying about your DNA, like really sit in our, in a quiet space of meditation and just, like you said, dig and, and understand. Once we're quiet and even, um, Tyler has to be quiet before he goes uh, and any medium um, usually will tell you this, that they have to have a quiet place before they go and read. So that's what I was trying to say. I, I may not have come across it, but thanks for letting me clarify. Absolutely, Lisa. Thank you so much. No, I, I, I get exactly what you mean. Go ahead, Elemental. Yeah, I, I'm, I definitely agree with Lisa. And, and I actually, I, I feel what you're saying with regard to consciousness. And I wonder, would it be simple enough to just consider energy? Because that's what we're talking about. Energy, awareness vibration, frequencies, and somehow they get meshed together or they'll come across. I think everybody in some way has the ability to do that if they're aware or if they're open. Sometimes, you know, you, you can have one without the other, but it's not complete. And those that are skeptical aren't going to be open to it. Um, I work with energy. And also color, which is in, important because we think about it until when, when we're depressed, there's a color that actually heals that or can't has the has the ability to heal that. So it's kind of like that if if that makes sense or at least if that you know that holds water. Um, again, I think we all have the abilities um. And yeah, there has to be a quieting of the noise. I do readings. I'm intuitive. And the other thing also is if somebody's empathic, it's even more so. If you have the ability, well, let's put it this way. If you're like out and about and the hair on your neck stands up, that to me, that's a sign enough that you have some sort of ability to pick up on it because you're not, you don't have any information that goes along with that. And you have to more or less take in, you know, the, the environment or the energy that's around, correct? So, I'm, what yeah. do you think? 
that's where I'm at right now. I'm working with it. And there are times that, you know, it's like a hit and miss. I'm sure you understand that. Um, so I have to take it each each day. And it's not something um, <clears throat> that I don't have an expectation and my intention is good. And, and that's the most important thing of all is where your intentions are. So awareness and energy, what do you think? I, I do love the the energy uh, because Lisa and I were talking earlier about how about energy and, and, and how it's like a grid line. And so remote viewing or mediumship, telepathy, all of those things would is simply just allowing that energy to travel on a certain grid line to a certain stopping point, in which case it has enough ability to see and return that image back to its original source. Am I, am I pinging on what you're kind of saying there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I haven't really experienced, well, you know what, in a sense, there are times that I guess you can call it with psychic abilities. And I can understand why Tyler w would say this because in a sense, there is some remote viewing. Um, I'm, you know, I, when I have, there's a certain client, um, and all of a sudden I'm getting a vision. That's basically, you know, where, where visions come in and that's a connection with them and their energy and their environment. And it's not remote viewing in itself is like extremely tedious <laughs> and it's also very specific. So, you, you have to have a certain mentality for it. That much I do know. I, you know, we researched it years ago. Um, I even considered studying it and possibly, you know, working at it. <clears throat> but you have to be very careful, too. If you're open, um, you know, it's like... Go ahead. Go ahead, Elemental. Sorry about that. Um, where was I? Okay, so anyway. Um, you were saying that you needed to be very careful. Yeah. I'd love to hear more about what, 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 you, what you're referring to. Yeah. If you're open, spirits know you're open. So it's just a question of, because you're going to make that connection. It's not something that is a part of you. If you understand, you know, what I'm, it's, it's, it's kind of like you're connecting with other energies. So that was what I was talking about. Yeah. It's like making a phone call to someone, but you don't know who else is in the room and someone else grabs the phone and is like, Hey, Benny, like da, 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 da. And you're like, what the hell are you talking? Like, who are you? So that, yeah. And I love that Tyler is really open about that, that, Hey, you know, I might hear some chatter and I don't know what it is and you don't know what it is and that's okay. Um, what kind of things are good? I mean, you know, I, you, I love nature, so I'm a nature grounder. Um, I like visualization as far as like protective stuff, plasma ball lights and things around my body. But I, I'd be curious to hear what your guys is when you do those meditations and you do those travels. What are, you, what are some of the things you do to ground yourself and protect yourself from not connecting onto energy you don't want to inter you know, interact with? Go ahead, Lisa. First, I just want to apologize to Elemental. I I saw mute everybody, everyone, and I thought I accidentally hit the button, so forgive me. Um, but, yeah, um, on what you just said, uh, Vinny, about um, tuning in to uh, different energy or the energy in nature or the universe, um, I think... Look, there's different energy. When you go outside on a sunny day um, and you walk amongst the trees, I feel a different energy there. I feel such peace, peacefulness there than when I go to the beach. The beach is calming and I love the waves. You know, it's a calming there, but it, it's different from 
the trees and sitting and listening to the to the wind it's like almost like 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 they're talking to you it, it's if that makes sense the other thing i was going to say was um what elemental said about color um that is like 100 percent right on um and for those that don't think that you know they may have uh the ability um or the int the intuitiveness that we're talking about um i just wanted to um bring something up about um how you feel when you or what you sense when you're out um in certain uh situations like uh let's say you go to a concert um there's different you know for some music can be can bring on a a, a sense of calm and then all of a sudden they sh shift the the music to another song that brings a sense of um just uh frenzy not a bad way but you know like dancing and going crazy you know like that song let's go crazy but um the other thing i wanted to say is um chanting um has a very big vibration and um growing up i don't want to um upset anybody but i grew up in a church and that happened and you could feel energy i don't necessarily felt it was quote the holy spirit but um actually i don't think it was the holy spirit i just felt the energy of the people all in unison channeling and chanting the same thing so um that's what i have to um kind of say about uh that in, in regards to what you were saying i think that's why a lot of us who are highly sensitive or however we can define this start to avoid this this gift or this ability because of the physical symptoms that sometimes come along with it, like nausea, um, extreme fatigue, uh, you know, like going back to Tyler and, and the amount of time that he needs to recoup after he does one of the, his big, big shows where he's just got hundreds or even thousands of people in the audience that level of self-awareness, right? To know that, look, I'm, I need to do this. But, but I know, you know, in my younger days when you have anxiety and things like that and you avoid, because first comes this nauseous feeling. So now like your throat's filled with water and you're like, I'm going to puke. And you're moving away and then it starts to go away. But when you're not self-aware, your mind reasons it like, okay, I'm feeling better now. But it's possibly because you've moved your physical body away from whatever it was that you were feeling and absorbing. And I just wonder how many of us, probably quite a large group, avoid this work because of the physical byproducts. Even working through trauma comes with physical headaches, nightmares, right? All those things that make you go like, I don't want to deal with this. And pushing through that will allow to get to that other side where you're like, I'm over that part now. I'm not triggered. I'm not feeling sick. Like now I know what this is. I can breathe through it. I really admire that. That is great strength. You know, me, Elemental, Tyler, people who do this work, uh, I don't believe that I could do it. I, at this point in my life, I think I would absorb a lot. It's like why I'm not a therapist. But um, I have great admiration for those who do that and, and in that loving way, how, how much love is given and poured into the work and into giving to the point of literal physical exhaustion. And so, you know, I don't think there's a way to avoid that even in my own life with, with just living as a trauma survivor, I've had to adjust my life 
to fit me instead of consistently, you know, pushing myself to fit something else. But yes, it, 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 so, you know, talking about how telepaths, and I'd be curious, Elemental, how you deal with something like this, you as well, or anybody else, when you are out in those crowds, uh, turning it off, and, and you know, how do you do that in a crowd? What? <clears throat> I wish I was a little bit more disciplined when it comes to meditation. The thing that I rely on most of all is protection. I use crystals. I will pray as far as that goes. Um, I'm not out in a lot of crowds at this point, especially. But I could be in a space. And basically there would be, there's sometimes there's emotion that's a heightened. And I start to feel it. And sometimes it's negative and sometimes it's positive. And then times after, um, I, I definitely, I have to leave. That's the only way I can deal with it. But if I'm there and sometimes, and I'll, sometimes I'll get a headache. I mean, a massive headache. I'm like, okay, there's definitely, you know, it's not anything else but that. <clears throat> But then there's a reason that's happening, and most likely there's a reason why I'm there. You know, this is something I would say quite a bit we're all guided to certain areas, to people, to make connections for different, you know, for specific reasons. I'm a firm believer of that. There are no coincidences. There are a hell of a lot of synchronicities. I'm not sure everybody could, you know, list five right now in some way <clears throat> so i don't go looking for it Th that's one thing but i do understand that if i do show up someplace that i haven't planned the odds are there's a reason and if it doesn't pan out and i don't feel well then i leave but i'm i am protected in some way i have a question um, you're over here making me like really think. Um, do we only get those physical reactions around certain individuals in certain environments? Um, like, does that feeling of nausea, the headaches, all of that, does it indicate something? Are there times when that would not happen? Go ahead, Lisa. Well, we got to think about when we go out, even if you go out, I mean, most, most of the time, if I go out, it's when it's, I know nobody else is going to, or very few people are going to be there. Um, so in some, some aspects, I tend to protect myself that way. But if I walk into a place and I start feeling that way, I mean, I'll, I, doesn't necessarily have to be after an intuition that I feel nauseous. Sometimes it hits me and I know it's because I'm around something that's hitting my energy. It's, I just know it. It, it just, you know, it, um, there's a difference from having a migraine and having a headache because, you know, you're, you've got too many different feelings coming at you at one time. Um, I love what Elemental said about wearing um, the crystal. Um, I have that too. I didn't even, you know, I had forgotten that, you know, that does protect you. Um, I didn't think about it. I didn't forget. I just didn't think about it. But um, trying to block out the noise is difficult. Um, I think for most intuitives um, and trying to keep out, keep away from the negative energy is also another, because empaths have this where you can sense it. You know this, Vinny, um, and I'm sure Elemental does too. I don't know about anybody else in the room, but um, you definitely sense it. And um, sometimes There'll be times where you have this, like, um, feeling that you need to either say something to somebody 
or do something for somebody and it's just overwhelming to the point that you do it you can't stop yourself you have to do it um it might be giving somebody uh money or like a stranger um or get telling somebody something that's positive just something nice that you look nice today Normally, I don't do that. I don't go up to a stranger and say, you, you look nice, you know, but something will be overwhelming pushing me to do that. And I listen to that. I listen to that um, intuition, that vibration or energy that I, I sense. Now, if I feel the negative uh, where I need to get out, I get out. Um, or if it's overwhelming and I get nauseous, that happens a lot where I have to leave the store because of anxiety. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, that's a really good question, um, Vinny, for, pe for us to talk about. And I'd like to hear what other people have to say about it, too. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. And I wanted to say hi to JB. I didn't recognize him because he's got this cool new uh, uh, little avatar. And I wanted to say hi to Peasant as well. If you guys want to speak, feel free to request the mic or just hang out and listen. Hey, Amber, thanks so much for popping in. Um, you know, one thing I like about Tyler that Ryan brought to my attention and just the way that he carries himself is he just will not entertain any negativity. He doesn't, he seems to just have this, like, even on his, um, you know, like about his critics, uh, those who will challenge him even on his Twitter or, or his social media, he just refuses to interact with it in any way. And it reminded me of something my mom, of course, you know, my mother was a difficult woman and um, she was one to throw Bible verses. And I remember one time she, we were just sitting reading and she put the book down and she said, look at me. And I was like, oh God, I'm in trouble. And then she said, I want you to remember something. It's going to be important. You're going to encounter this a lot in your life. I was probably about 15, 16. And she said, you're going to encounter darkness. And it is important that you turn your back on it. You don't feed it. You don't, you know, she was into demonology. Don't feed the demons. You turn your back on it. And at the time I was like, oh God, you know, here goes this preaching again, yada, yada. But now it's so true. There are these times that you just like build a brick wall. And when you build that brick wall, um, yeah, it builds, it builds a wall again and you turn your back. Not. So I noticed that too, um, that Tyler does that. He just entered that negative. Uh, we lost you, Vinny. Are you still talking? Oh, no. Go ahead, Elemental. I saw your hand raised. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, <laughs> it's getting a little woo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where were you? No, listen, I get sent to another universe. So don't, you know, for some reason, my phone acts up. I, I have no idea. Um, that's why I thought it was me right now, because that'll happen. Oh, you didn't mean to raise your hand. You did. You didn't no, I talk. no, I did. I did. Um, I did because, um, I, and I was thinking this, and you you kind of alluded to it by like what you just said. It is um, being little. <laughs> yeah, there are there are emotional vampires, and I and I think that that's where Tyler's coming from. Uh, aside from the spirit that knows you're open, you've got people that, and and if you're empathic. They will have a tendency, for some reason, you're like a magnet. And they just, you know, it's like they go flop to your face and they're stuck. So that's probably what, what he was alluding to also. And that's where you have to protect yourself. And it's not easy. And I know through all of my life, um, and, and understand, um, none of this was going on when I was younger. I don't think I started experiencing things. It started with out of body experiences, but I was already in my late teens. So, you know, it's not like I was accustomed to it as a child. I didn't, you know, I didn't have invisible friends. I didn't see spirits. I don't see spirits now. You know, it's more telepathic, but 
I, I have always been aware there are certain negative people that as soon as they see me or meet me, that's it. I'm done. So, and I have to watch for it. I don't know. You would think that my guides would kind of direct me in an opposite direction, you know, like tell me to go to the right to get away. They don't do that. So, yeah, that's why as soon as you said that, that was the first thing. And there is no cure for that as far as the other person is concerned, unless because they have to deal with that. So there isn't a, a, any amount that would be enough for that type of individual. So it, it would be, you know, behoove you to sever the ties. I just thought I'd bring that up. Yeah, no, that makes so much sense. It's like, um, actually, recently, just in the last few days with a friend dealt with something similar where we were talking about that when you are highly sensitive and empathic, yes, those vampires, they can spot you, your food. They're like, that's my dinner tonight. And boom, they are on you. And, you know, I watch Dr. Romani a lot. Um, she talks about, you know, narcissism and psychopathy and things like that, um, about it, how important it is to just absolutely go no contact. Do not let them get one pinhead of a strand or keep one pinhead of a strand. Yes. Um, I like what you guys have said. I mean, it's really solidified some of the experiences I've had. In that, you know, you just have to cut ties and move on and not let that person continue to feed because our energy is so precious. It really is. Um, and I'm even noticing, you know, I'm in my 50s, so I'm noticing that I'm much more sensitive to that vampirish kind of behavior in that my body reacts even worse than ever. Like, it's a signal like, no, that's not good. You know, I was a little off today. My joints felt stiff. I just felt like I was running under because it pulls the energy, which affects the immune system. And I absolutely do believe this is a physiological to um, biological part of our body. I, I don't look at it as woo necessarily. I look at it as like, this is a part of who we are. It's science that we're energy. You know, it's science that we have a physiology and a neurology system. So then why couldn't we project that? Um, and, and I'm really curious about the scribbling that Tyler does. And maybe you, Elemental, can explain this for me. Do you have anything like that? What, what's happening there um, do you have an understanding of that, how he scribbles in that notebook by chance? I, I think it's just what he says in a sense where it, you know, to draw in the concentration to release whatever is, um, you know, getting in the way, obstructing clarity. Um, I know that, you know, here's the other thing, too. Being creative, in a sense, um, when I used to draw and I could spend hours, it was almost like I was in a trance. So I think it m possibly takes hold of the concentration so that it's focused. I, that makes I think, sense. Yes. I think I, that's what you said, basically. Yeah, the lucidness. Yeah, no, I get lucid when I paint too. And I also do a lot of stream of consciousness writing where I lucidly dump my brain before I write. So that makes sense. Go ahead, Lisa. I was just going to agree with Elemental. I, I believe um, that he is focusing. It, it's bringing his brain just to one center point and he's not he's just scribbling it's helping him focus on the energy that's in that's coming through to um read for the people that he's with um he does it in the car um he does it you know when he's uh i found that dark room that he made for himself very interesting um but he even did it in there and he had complete silence and um, 
complete focus in there. There was no noise. Um, so yes, elemental. I 100% agree with you. It, it, I, I have that when I, when I paint and draw, um, too, I, I tend to, it, it tends to be a, an escape or, a, a place of almost meditation for me. 100%. Hypnotic, right? Yes. Hypnotic sense. No. Yes. Yes. It's almost like those times that we create and we look back and we go, wow, like, wow, that's what I drew or painted or wrote. Or I imagine he must have that same kind of um, retrospect, like, wow, I, I hit so many things. And of course, we only heard a six minutes of his reading, which he said was an hour long. It also reminded me a little bit of stimming. So I, I used to have some stimming things as a child, like I would go with my, with my throat and, and little things like that. And I wondered how much of that also, which that's what stimming is, is it's, it's a way of, of us getting that anxiety out, right? When we're wringing our hands or rubbing our hands or we have a tick or something. Um, I'd never seen anybody scribbled like that. And I love, by the way, the visual of him with Matt because on the wall was this massive, massive, huge painting or um, art piece. And it was all scribbles. Like he had done just this ginormous scribble art. So I thought that was really cool. And yeah, I, I, I too, you know, so it makes me wonder about so many children who start to tell their parents, you know, I see this, I see this. And they just say, oh, you know, that's, that's imaginary. That's, you know, that's this, that's that, but it gets brushed away. Right. I mean, like for me, anything. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can't hear Vinny though. What okay. happened, Vinny? Yeah, I know JB's had his hand up too. Yeah. You there, Vinny? Try to talk. No, you're not coming in. Uh, I'm going to let JB um, go ahead. JB, what you have to say? It goes by quite a few names, um, premonitions, instincts, uh, sixth sense. But I think it's like intelligence. For some people, there are different levels of it that we have. Uh, in the military, you are taught and trained to be aware and reach that lucidity that you guys are talking about, where in combat, you are more in tune and aware to what's going on around you. You somewhat for me it was like sending out feelers to somewhat understand what was going on around me and what was ahead of me and what was behind me it's something you can develop i think for me it, being trained to do that and it even is in effect even now today just seeing different things and different people out there and knowing uh, there's a connection with them whether they're good or bad or whatever Hold on just a minute, JB. Vinny, um, your uh, host mic is like echoing. So I'm try to use. I'm so sorry, you guys. My internet jumped off. So I was over here trying to fix it. So go ahead. I don't want to end the space because we've only got 10 minutes. And so I apologize. Yeah. Go ahead, JB. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, no, I finished. I was just saying, I think this. Uh... This feeling, this energy is something that you can develop if you're trained to do it. I think it's, like I was saying, it's, it's a lot like intelligence. There's different levels of it. For me, it was something that I was trained to do uh, after being, getting into the military. So I, I, it's, I think it's a lot different for a lot of different people. It's different for me. I'm, I'm curious if you, um, you know, whatever you feel comfortable sharing, how do they, you, how do, how are you able to use it as far as being a soldier? How did it, um, I know, like, I'm sure you're, it really heightened your instincts. I'm so curious what kind of training exercises they encouraged you guys to do. 
Well, it's uh, it's it's intense, and I can't really get into the different techniques that they use. But it just they train you to heighten your awareness. Uh, it's and you may it may be something that you have in you all along, and they just find it, they see it, and they cultivate it because not everybody can do it. Uh, you have people who are in scout patrols. You have people who can track. And tracking is a lot of just paying attention to your surroundings and feeling. It's like a spirit, so to speak, without getting too uh, far out there. But I think it was something that I had all along. They just cultivated it. And now it's even there today when I'm out walking around or when I'm, I mean, I mean, I'm always scanning, always looking, always feeling. That's pretty much the only way I can explain it. The training that they put you through, they don't put everybody through. I think they choose different people to, to do this training with based on a psych eval. That's my understanding of how they did it, how they got to me. That's really interesting because in the beginning of this, we were um, talking about Ingo Swan, who was part of Project uh, Stargate, which was the DIA, the Defense Intelligence. Um, they were working, you know, uh, the, for the potential for psychic phenomenon in, in military and domestic intelligence. And, and I know they also did remote viewing. Um, I believe that I read a story once where they had somebody find some terrorists and, and the woman was, was pretty straight on. Um, so there has to be some some validity to it, right? If our own military is is using this, and I really think that that's not necessarily a, a bad thing. I don't know how you guys feel about something that like that being used in times of war, but I think it could be okay if it's coming from a protective stance, right? Or or protecting yourself from the enemy. Go ahead, elemental. Yeah, there is still the potential for for evil to come in. And again, it could be spirit and, dare I say, <clears throat> extraterrestrial or, <laughs> you know, something demonic. So that's a possibility. And, and that could cause physical, you know, repercussions there, physical things to, to go awry. Um yeah, you know, to me, Mr. JB, yeah, I think, and it sounds like intuition, and you probably had a high level, you know what I'm saying? Because it sounds like you're extremely in, intuitive. So it, it would make sense. And at the same point, being under those conditions, I would imagine that you still had to be concerned about evil energy as well, right? Well, it's, it's how I survived that I think many people who were around me didn't because I was just so very in tune to the surroundings. And, you know, it, it's, it's hard to explain, but when you're out there, you can sense what's ahead, what's about to happen. It's uncanny, which is a strange word to use for it, but a lot of the soldiers around me didn't have that. They're not here today. So I attribute it... I, I say it's because I had something in me and it's still there, but now it's not as sharp, but it is still there because I don't use it every day. But the military took great advantage of those types of things. Is it the same as sonar? I'm just curious. And, and then I'll, I'll shut up. Is it the same thing that for instance, if somebody, if somebody were blind, basically, the, in order to adapt into the environment and, and when they're walking through, they're picking up energy or, I, I don't maybe frequency. I'm, at this point, things have changed so much in terminology over the years so that they're able to determine that there's an object at a certain distance. Is that the same thing? Well, we did train blind. Uh we, we trained blindfolded with hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat martial arts, and we did train uh, in simulators where we were blindfolded and we had to go on sound and feelings. 
okay. things like that. Hearing hearing plays a great part in it. So uh, it might be a close to sonar, but not like the dolphins or, or whales like that. Oh, right. I understand. I understand. I, w- I wasn't, I'm not sure of the terminology at this point. I'm so way behind <laughs> when it comes to that. I gave up. But, um, okay, thank you. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, I just wanted to um, say to JB, um, I really appreciate your service um, to our country. I don't think I've ever said that to you, but I really do um, admire you and uh, respect what you've done for this country and for all of us. Um, I also think you were definitely trained for um, the intuitive um, being able to sense what's going on around you. I definitely think um, that the military does do that with, um, I don't know if they single out people, like you said, by their psychological evaluations. Maybe they do. Um, You would know better than, than myself. But um, I'm going by history right now when I state this, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole because we all could. But back in World War II, um, Hitler did a lot of that. Um, Having uh, mediums look for different uh, symbols or, or, uh, you know, Egyptian-type material or even ufo type stuff that he thought could bring him more energy to beat um to to win the war so um on that note we're at 11 and i think Vinny, you may want to wrap this up i don't know i'll let you let you take the mic Yeah, I mean, I've been trying to keep these at an hour, but of course, I don't mind, you know, if more conversation wants to be had, I'm sure we all could stay here for forever and talk about this. I too appreciate you, JB, especially for sharing that information and absolutely appreciate you for your service and everything that I know personally that you've gone through. Um, I, I, I think that's ama- like amazing that, that it's at least recognized and we're getting somewhere. And I truly believe that humans do have the capability. I remember one time my father said to me, like, don't believe that you don't have access to your brain and don't believe that you don't have access to like your body. That's not true. And it really made me think, you know, how we're often told, oh, you only use a small portion of your brain. So, you know, that's just how humans are that may not be true, right? That may be just like a portion of kind of like a mind control thing to make us believe. So once we're, if you believe that, then you're automatically immediately disempowered, right? Go ahead, Lisa. 100%. I was thinking the same thing about that we use such a small portion of our brain. Um, And like JB said, he was trained. I believe everybody has the ability to tap into their intuition or their intuitiveness and that they can actually um, train it, actually build it or or get stronger in the field, but you have to work at it. And, And there's things that hold us back sometimes, um, our own sense of self. Um, some of us, you know, have to come to a place where of acceptance and authenticity and, and, you know, I'm not saying that everybody's like that, um, because I, I've always been somewhat intuitive. Um, I'm not where I'd like to be, but, um, I've had premonitions and other things and I'm just saying I'm just starting to come into my authentic self and really feel like I'm thriving. And I think I feel differently when I meditate now. I feel uh, so much stronger from the meditation and um, from nature. And um, that's pretty much what I had to say. Oh, one other thing about... uh, JB and his um, 
uh, training. You know, there's um, the sonar uh, elemental brought up the sonar aspect of it. There is something to that elemental. When I was a scuba diver, they didn't train us in that at all. But they did say, you know, you have to be aware of your compass and where you're at and, you know, no, put right down the compass uh, measurement, you know, I'm not using the right word, but the compass location of the boat and then um, map yourself as you go back, right? I never did that. I was terrible at reading the compass and half the time in underneath the uh, Atlantic waters here in Fort Lauderdale, there's metal everywhere off a dive site, especially in the Keys when we'd go diving. <laughs> Or in a quarry, like one time we went diving. None of our, none of our, um, uh, our uh, gauges worked. <laughs> so I was able, and I 100% believe it was like a sonar intuition. I could recognize the ocean floor, and my uh, dive master, a master diver said that that was like one of, I was one of the few people he's ever known to be able to do that. And I'm just, I just want to say we can train ourselves that way. Um, I've always had that ability um, of being able to find my way back based on recognition of my environment. But I think everybody can do that. They just have to work at it and practice. So it's the same with other things. Um, and I'm going to turn over the mic now. Thank you. I think that would be a fun kind of, I mean, we do that, Lisa, a little bit, right? Kind of test remote viewing with each other. But I think that, you know, that's a fun exercise to kind of go out on at the top of the hour. And I just want to say thank you again to Ryan and Amber and Elemental JB, Lisa, for you guys showing up and everybody out there on your computers that we can't see here. We're here every week, uh, 7 p.m. on Thursdays. You know, we love this space. We want to keep it positive sharing and how we can grow and become better people. And who knows, even come to a place where we're, you know, I do a lot of self-healing. Um, I went through some inflammation issues and just threw medicine away and healed myself. And it worked um, through mindset. So I do believe that there's something with us that's incredible and great. So I'm sending love to everybody. And again, thank you all so much for being here um, and for bearing with me with my little internet blips. Um, so if anybody has anything else to say, please raise your hand. If not, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording and just say thank you. I'm sending you guys all out with love. Have a great night.